to In Contact, a news and public affairs presentation by Association of Black Journalists. And now your host, Angela Robinson. Neighborhood killer, six a killer, old killer. It's neighborhood six old killer right there. Nine deuce hoover, that S stand for Southside, you know what I'm saying? Big H, that stand for the who. This sign right here, that's a neighborhood crip symbol. And then we don't do that, you know what I'm saying? We throw it on H's like that, drop my big H on it like that, throw that two on top so they know that deuce hoove, nine deuce hoover criminal, that's why I got that C on top of that five. If you can tell out of all my letters, the C the biggest, could that for criminal. What made you decide to join the gang? I felt by myself. I felt alone, I had no family, mama crackhead. I just wanted to be a part of something that was taking over and they was taking over to me, so I joined them. I got jumped in by dudes. By dudes? Yeah. How many? Big dudes, like 16. You you held your ground? Yeah, when you fall, you gotta get back up. You gotta swing back. I always been a fighter, but I got more respect now. I think that's what it's about for real, the power, the money, and the respect. Mm. Good morning. The clip you've just seen is from the documentary, If Streets Could Talk. Whether you live in the inner city, suburbs, or rural America, your community may be affected by gangs. We've all seen the sprawling graffiti on countless buildings. We may ignore them as eyesores, but it is so much more and can hold messages about what gangs are in your area. Gangs come in all ethnic groups, but Latins and African Americans have the highest percentages. According to the 2011 National Gang Threat Assessment, approximately 1.4 million gang members belonging to more than 33,000 gangs were criminally active in the U.S. as of April 2011. The report also found that gangs are evolving and engaging in non-traditional crimes such as smuggling of illegal immigrants, human trafficking, and prostitution, as well as using technology to facilitate criminal activity. Many of these gangs are well organized and sophisticated. They have been multiplying and migrating across state lines, entrenching themselves in inner city suburbs, and sadly, in our schools. The problem is pervasive and sometimes glamorized by popular music and movies. And this morning, we peel back some of the layers to number one, try and better understand the signs of the gang culture and lifestyle. And two, find out what communities and parents can do in terms of solutions and prevention. And finally, focus on the youth and what can be done to save a generation. We are truly honored to welcome the chief of the police for the Atlanta Police Department, Chief George Turner with us this morning. We're also honored to have Stokes of the Community Teen Coalition. It's also completed the documentary you saw on gangs, If Streets Could Talk. And Art Powell, former gang member, now bullying and gang expert, consultant and author of traumatic memoirs, Gangsta, To Be or Not To Be. Gentlemen, we thank you for being with us. Well, thank you. Thank Welcome. you for us having us. Yes, indeed. That clip, it's very disturbing, at yes, least for is. me. Um, very sad, but also lets me know that we've got to find some urgent solutions. Those numbers are ridiculous. I agree with that. We've got to Pam. stop some of this madness. So let's get right to it, because I think, I think, and as we mentioned, we glamorize this sometimes on television and movies and music. But what is a gang? How do we define that? Well, Angela, first of all, you know, the state defines gangs as two or three individuals that are coming together to create a criminal enterprise. Mm. Now, that could be two people that are coming together to break in homes. But the fact is, it doesn't matter what the name of that individual gang is. Yes. If they are violating laws together, creating a cr criminal enterprise, we relate to that as a gang issue, that we can charge a group of individuals who are violating the law collectively. And so the definition means so little. Gotcha. Our challenge is, is how do we deal with the issues that we have? Absolutely. The Atlanta Police Department are doing, we've always looked at this in four prongs. We have to educate, educate our communities. We've got to do prevention and doing that in our schools as early as middle school and, t and elementary schools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've got to continue to intervene when issue, individuals are involved in gangs. And then finally, we have to be the law enforcement wing to suppress crimes that they are violating. And so we've been working very diligently in that. 
We've got about, we have, we've documented more than 100 additional gangs that we monitor and track in our city. And I know you have, I know the Atlanta Police Department has really got a special unit and we're looking at details of that and we're going to talk more about the law enforcement and the penalties. But basically, and gentlemen, please chime in, I don't need to get hung up on what this gang thing looks like as the chief so beautifully has put it. Just know if it's two folks doing something really ugly and wrong and breaking the law, it could be a gang. Is that how that's interpreted? Absolutely. Is is that what you found through documentary? Yeah, absolutely. Um, One thing I've noticed even going out on the streets and um, like you mentioned earlier, when you talked about entertainment, um, just like Chief um, stated, two or three or more, um, if they're involved in a criminal activity, it's considered a gang. So many of these young kids that are involved in rap groups or um, it could be a rap group, a band or anything like that, if they commit an act or someone within that group commit a crime, they are now considered a gang. A gang right. And so one, another thing is that the, the Georgia Gang and Terroristic Act, where they have mandatory sentences added on. So. The thing that a lot of these young kids don't realize, if you crime, that's one charge. Right. But also when they add the Gang and Terrorist Act against you, that's another charge where they have mandatory sentences. And some of these sentences are three to five, five to 10, 10 to 15 years, depending on the charge. Art, you're a former gang member. Yes. When you hear this, it, how does it speak to you? And what are you saying to young people now? Well, <clears throat> I, I really focus now on addressing consequences. A lot of our young people uh, have gotten the media, mm-hmm. they look at the media, and, and, and it's being advocated or promoted, that image, that gangster image, that thug image of being hard is being promoted. Mm-hmm. I mean, commercials, magazines, movies, so our kids, our young people think that it's okay to do it mm-hmm. because that's what they see every day. That's what, that's, that's their reality. When they're playing video games, when the people in their environment, they are know that this is okay. You know, the most important sense we have is sight. We copy mm-hmm. as people, mm-hmm. we copy, we mimic what we see. So in society, these images are being, you know, advocated or promoted again. So, but they're not being told about the consequences mm-hmm. that come with mm-hmm. being involved with their lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I always tell young people, um, I don't know any successful criminals. <laughs> you better say that. I know, I know people that had a good run five, 15 years, they were getting away with doing the crimes. But ultimately, at the end, they end up going to prison or they were killed yep. or they experienced some type of tragedy from being involved in criminal activities. And that's what I really try to get them to understand the, the seriousness about it. Not get caught up on the materialistic gains mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. money and women and jewelry and cars and the things that they can that, that they're being told and they're being manipulated into thinking they can gain from doing those things. My emphasis is really just trying to let them know, if you get involved with this lifestyle, this is what could happen. Exactly. This, is what, this is what's Absolutely. going to happen. And, and this is very real. It, 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 you know, it's not going to have a commercial break in it, and it's not going to be tidied up in an hour. Absolutely. Right. Is it cheap? Exactly right. It's going to be real. You know, I hadn't thought about it. when you commit the crime, then right. that's a penalty depending on that crime. Right. And then, thank you, Dominique, for bringing this out. And I, of course, you have a litany of it, I'm right. sure, to tell Chief. Now, if you're in a gang, that's a brand new penalty. Right. Mm-hmm. Dominique couldn't have said it any better for me. <laughs> I mean, the fact is that it, that's exactly what happens. You know, we provide that additional charge when we can determine that an individual was part of a gang when they created that crime. And we've done that quite successfully. Listen, I mean, one of the things that the Atlanta Police Department do very well, Mm -hmm. and that is to arrest offenders. Mm -hmm. The last thing that we need to think about is how we arrest more and more young men that look Mm -hmm. like me. Absolutely. We've got to do a better job of trying to prevent young men from being involved, and women, Mm -hmm. from being involved in gangs on the right path. Absolutely. That's why we have to do more intervention and prevention and working alongside some of these great successful uh, men that are involved here today. We've got to partner. The only way that we're going to be successful in our community Mm -hmm. is to work collectively together on real solutions. Dominique, I want you to explain uh, the Community Teen Coalition. I promise you I'm going to let you give us a little synopsis of that. But I want to go back to something that you've all have said, but Art, I think you hit hit, hit an interesting nail on the head. They've, young people have got to understand, forget the car, forget the, this, their consequences. But the lady we heard at the beginning that Dominique interviewed for the yeah. documentary, she didn't talk about a car. She didn't talk about because she was going to get jewelry. Yeah. She talked about because she has respect and she's getting love. 
That's, well, that's pretty interesting. Is one of the lures, is that one of the lures to get how a young person can get in a gang? It, and, and, and what people don't understand is that, and this is what I had But we know that's not true love. Let me be clear. Exactly. And that's, know that's, yeah. that's what I was going to get to. Right. What they don't understand is that gangs are tools of manipulation and mm -hmm. deception. Mm -hmm. And I had to experience that firsthand. I put my life on the line every day for these individuals I grew up with and, and I committed crimes with. When did you get in the game? When I was 15. I actually, st well, but back in 1984, they really weren't known as gangs. They started out mm -hmm. as social clubs. But when you had this, uh, when the crack era kicked in, and you right. had all these migrating gangs coming to mm -hmm. Atlanta, it, it, mm -hmm. it metamorphosized to more, something more graphic and more violent because those social clubs eventually merged into drug selling ga uh, gangs or became criminalists and got, got involved in other criminal activity and they actually went to war with these gangs that were coming in, in from different cities to capitalize off the money that was made here in Atlanta. What gang were you in? I was involved in a gang called the I Refuse Posse. The I Refuse Posse? Yes. So when you see some and whatnot, and, and Chief is shaking your head, go ahead Chief. That's just amazing. I yeah. mean, the fact is back in 1994, the city of Atlanta started our first gang unit. And I was in 94, you said? 1994. 94, uh -huh. On the heels of two heinous crimes that I investigated mm -hmm. along with several other mm -hmm. uh, individuals that are on our, gang, on our gang squad. And we also prosecuted the I Refuse gang <laughs> at the same time with the ATF. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to me how we continue to talk right. about various different exactly. things. But, you know, mm -hmm. the fact is, it is a trend. This young man is right on point as it relates yeah. to what mm -hmm. happens. You know, the, the thing is, you talked about it. When you start talking about individuals looking for those uh, different pools that put them in, into those situations, that is exactly what we saw when we investigated those two young women who was killed uh, in 1994 94, right. after being, we were investigating them as runaways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the young women had been, de she was decapitated, Magdalena Glenn, yes, and the other one, young woman yes. was, was in a uh, duffel bag. We found her out in southwest Atlanta on Kimberly Road. But at the same time, we were all had been taken advantage of by these gang members. It, what got, what lured you? Wow. Um, I pretty much grew in an abuse. I grew up in an abusive household, mm -hmm. absent father. Uh, my mother was at home in the evening, so mm -hmm. I was drawn into the environment. And so you were that's, just out there. Well, mm -hmm. That's what I seen. Mm -hmm. I seen drug dealers. I seen gang bangers. I seen pimps. Mm -hmm. So those became my new role, role models. models. Right. Those were the people I wanted to copy and emulate and mm -hmm. be like. Uh, I didn't see lawyers. I didn't see a chief of police. A chief of police who, who, who like I could see mm -hmm. as something that I could possibly become. And that's what a lot of our young people are dealing with right now today. Dominique, is that what you heard? Yeah, I was going to say, even in, in coming out interviewing <coughs> several gang members, look at the reasons why many of these kids are joining gang. And there are several reasons. Sure. One of it could be for finance. Um, one of the main reasons I noticed was that sense of family. And several of the gang members said that that was it was that sense of brotherhood or sisterhood. Um, those are the reasons why. And so when you get a young person that is lacking that at home, they're seeking that in the gangs. And the gangs <coughs> understand if I can provide them reward and recognition like mm -hmm. everyone who wants, show them that love, mm -hmm. then I have them. And on top of that, get a little bling on the side, Absolutely. and you start your own gang, and then it goes Absolutely. on and on and on. There's some, you know, we, we mentioned, you know, you drive around and some people say, oh, it's an eyesore. What does this mean? And, and Chief, you know, we're no different than any other major metropolitan oh, city. No. We got graffiti and stuff right. everywhere. Yeah. And but when you see some of this, what does this tell us? What does it tell you, law enforcement? What, my expert bully and gang expert, what does this mean when you see these letters? And the, what does that mean? Yeah. That's your insane. Is that your insane yeah. group? Insane vice lords. Vice lords. Let me, let me also say this, Angela. Mm -hmm. What you will see is that a blood? I just, is that yeah. mean the bloods? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chief. What, what Chief. you see around our city and mm -hmm. and the uh, cities around America, as well as Germany. I just returned from uh, Germany, and you see graffiti. Yes. Gra you see graffiti art. What mm -hmm. we encourage people to do is make sure you call the Atlanta Police Department so that we can identify it and then remove it. First of all, we need to identify what it is. Right. So graffiti artists are different from gang members. Yes. Yeah. And so we need to talk about But you just said a key, a key thing, an artist and a gang member. I, I'm going to yeah. give an artist his props. Go ahead. Well, there's a difference. Um, what does you, that mean, though, for instance? Now, what does that mean? 
Well, these are um, CERT 13. Right. Um, this is a gang, CERT 13. Okay. Um, there's a difference between tagging and right. gang graffiti. Exactly. Okay. And a lot of times what you see in some of the areas, it could be just tagging, which Chief just mentioned. These are artists. Right. Um, taggers are connected to tagging crews. Which and what they a do. violation of the law also. Yeah, <laughs> well, <right>. absolutely. <laughs> so what they do play. is to... That's still against the law. <laughs> and if you get two or more yeah. together, he's going to slap something else on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You, this, 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 all, this information right here is gang graffiti. Okay. So these gangs is territory. So they're marking their territory. Blood in, blood out. Yeah. So they're letting you know this is our territory. This is our area. And also it can be a sign of, of dissing rival gang members. And other gang members, uh, rival gang members know I, if I go in this territory, it may be blood, crip, mm -hmm. insane, vice. It could be different gangs within that area. Do you know we saw the gentleman in the beginning doing slapping his hand and all of that. Did you have to go through all of that ritual? Did you tag? Did you graffiti? Did you... What did you do See, to break the law? The, the, the gangs I was in back in those days, they weren't set up like a di traditional gangs. Yeah. That's, he was he is from a traditional gang out of California. Yeah. Okay. So our gangs were more like neighborhood gangs, like hybrid gangs, hybrid gang, what right. they call hybrid gangs or, you know, homegrown gangs. Mm -hmm. And basically, like I said, you had, you, got, you had so many different projects and so many different communities in Atlanta back then that these community, these people came together collectively doing this, having the same characteristics of those traditional gangs. Right. But we, we didn't have, jump, we didn't jump in. We grew up together. Yeah. So okay. we, we, you know, we didn't have to go through a process of trying to prove who we were because we fought together. We shared each other's clothes. We, you know, mm -hmm. we so did. you just formed your own internal right. neighborhood gang. Exactly. Yeah. And yes. broke the law. Exactly. Yes, we did. And broke the law. You did time. Yes, yes. Right. I right. did. Okay. And your reform is all good, but right. we just wanted to get it all out on the table. When we look at the graffiti, and you, first of all, want to clean it up, but it gives you an identification of who might be in town, who might yeah. not be in town, what's doing what. How does all of this come together as we talk about the Community Teen Coalition? Because your partnership is the key so that we can save some li lives, end it, and get some consequences. But as you're trying to tell folks ahead of the... Right. Mm -hmm. Put it out of business and take something off your plate to worry about. Right. It starts well, well, with the community first. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you, you got to understand this. If the community doesn't acknowledge that there's a problem, then partnerships are, are going to struggle, like with, with the chief and his law enforcement department. If, if, if the community is not willing to say, hey, we want to do something about this and we need to come together with you guys because we want to get them out the community, yes. then it's not going to work. But if you, I mean, because if you got a community that supports this lifestyle, that supports the individuals mm -hmm. in this neighborhood mm -hmm. being profitable mm -hmm. and committing crimes, and they're not, and they're not mm -hmm. making them accountable for it and being involved with getting them out of the community, the problem is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And part of the things that with Art and I, what we're doing is actually we're doing a school tour right now, and um, it's called Bully and Breeze Gang Members. So we're going into the schools, educating these kids on the law, on the consequences, because many of these kids have no idea. Mm -hmm. And so part of that, with the partnership that he just mentioned, um, you have to give these kids an alternative. So it's easy to say you Very want a true. kid out, out of a game, mm -hmm. yeah. but if you get them out, what are you going to do with them next? Right, and right. that's the problem I'm seeing, because I'm getting all the time where young people say, you know what, I want to get out of, out of the game. Yes. Mr. Stokes, I'm looking for a job. I need yes. help. Yes. So part of Community Teen Coalition, we have an entrepreneurship program. So we have contracts throughout Atlanta. We have Italian oh, yes. Ice Carts, Grady Stadium. Yes. Um, we have carts there where these kids, we, they learn the very basics of business, money management, financial literacy. And so now they understand, instead of selling drugs, you might not make as much money. Absolutely. But you know what? I don't have to watch my back or worry about going to, being incarcerated or dead. And so that's how you can get respect, and that's how exactly. you can get some self-esteem. It's exactly. got to start there too, Chief, and that's how you can get some love. Are they hearing you? Yes, they are. The problem is, is like, like Art said, is, is getting a buy-in from, from, it has to be a collective effort. Mm -hmm. We've been doing it for several years, so mm -hmm. now hopefully, you know, partnering with the Atlanta Police, Atlanta Police Department. Yeah, I, I tell you what, and as, as I said, part of our mission, our mission in the Atlanta Police Department is to reduce crime. Period. And mm -hmm. to improve the quality of life and partner with our community. Mm -hmm. And so any to look to partner with anybody doing things positive. We have our police athletic league that we're doing, mm -hmm. uh, doing work and mm -hmm. we're yeah. teaching gang resistance in the mm -hmm. schools. But the truth is we have to provide more opportunities for Absolutely. community and private associations mm -hmm. like, like these young men so we can work together to get to an end. And I appreciate this opportunity for you to put the show oh, on. Oh, we appreciate doing this because we need to know. We need to be educated. Chief, I will take, let me, before I ask this, how did you get out? Wow. Um, I just went to, when I went to prison, I just, I was done. 
I just, I went, because I went And to do you ever really get out of a gang? You can always get out of a gang. You see, in this, how did you, look at me this way. How did you get out up here? That's what I'm yeah, saying. It, 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 this way, this, this yes. way, it starts from here. That's yes. what I said. I made up in my mind yeah. when good. I knew I was finna do time. Well, uh, that's not, this not the life for me. Mm -hmm. So regardless of the consequences that came after that, mm -hmm. I wasn't concerned because I spent the half years of my life in prison. Yes, yes, yes. So, and they weren't there for me. At all. Mm -hmm. So at all. That, that was my reality. And, yeah. that, and that's, a, that's why I said that's when I learned and I started realizing that the years I was involved in gangs on the street and in prison, they were tools of manipulation. Mm -hmm. they, they, they seen that I, I had a weakness, mm -hmm. that I, was, I had low self-esteem. They seen I didn't have uh, a, fam a, support, a family support system. Mm -hmm. They seen that financially I was struggling. Yeah. And, and they mm -hmm. basically... They prey on those things. They look at those things as an opportunity to lure people in and draw these young people in and say, we got you. I go. I see you got holes in your shoes. I'll buy you another pair of shoes. shoes right. You know, mm -hmm. you need some new clothes. Mm -hmm. I'll give you some clothes. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I mean, that's what even what she was talking about, intervention and prevention, how critical that is. Because yes. when you look at Georgia, we spend over one point billion dollars a year on mm -hmm. incarceration. Uh, right now, there's thirty six hundred dollars that's being spent on um, pot, um public school, right. um, $6,800 that's mm -hmm. being spent on university system student, $18,000 is being spent to mm -hmm. incarcerate a person. So mm -hmm. more money out of a dollar, 50 cents is, is being used for incarceration. Mm -hmm. So we need to change that. Absolutely. It's a brand new business institution. I think recent numbers are, and even the new Jim Crow book, and yeah. I, I think it's the yeah. sister that just did the book, talked about we've got more black men incarcerated than we had in Absolutely. slavery. It was slaves, and you know that's beyond unnecessary yeah. and deep. Go ahead. Jim. She's absolutely right. That's but outrageous. At the same time, we have challenges with when people are, are breaking into folks' homes, uh -huh. and when you go to community meetings, Miss Johnson don't care anything about the social ills of that person that broke into her home. That's right. I mean, because and she wants you to stop somebody right. from breaking into And as a home, law enforcement right. official, uh -huh. I have to bring that person to justice, and us just the system have to make a decision as it relates to what happens to that young person. Right. I continue to talk about is what we do to prevent young people from being a part of this vicious mm -hmm. cycle. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we need to continue to partner mm -hmm. with community groups and individuals such as these two young men on yeah. how we get out there to make a difference in the lives of these young black people. When we see certain things we said about the graffiti, we need to let somebody know. Yes. Now, when even in the, in the beginning clip, and, I, and I, I think we have some more tape, they've got all the signs. And so sure. if parents see, I'm not trying to get everybody paranoid, but come on. If parents see, here we go, some of these signs and signals from their, from their um, children, they need to call somebody. Absolutely. Or is it too late? No, it's not too late. I mean, it's, it's never too late. What? Because that's a, what, what they is on the call thing? it stacking okay. or hand signals. It's a way of communicating. And so you can communicate to one of your gang members or to rival gangs. You can also diss a rival gang by doing um, these hand signals, exactly what these guys are doing. And so what they're doing is, is acknowledging their set. Well, I'll tell you one other thing, too. I mean, do, during my time of investigating gangs, these young people are very proud of what they do. Yeah, they mm -hmm. will tell you absolutely everything yeah. you want to know just by asking them questions. And so the truth is they come, it comes down to the fact that they're just so insecure with who they are yeah. and they become a member of something that they think as, as being positive as opposed to being positive about an education, about the school that they attend. And that's what we've got to change. What else should parents look for? I mean, I mean really, seriously, what do they need to just... Well, attitude. Because in our day... You did absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think, that, I think that's the problem. A lot of parents aren't looking for it. That's right. The reality is this, mm -hmm. you know, you and, it's, and it goes twofold. You got parents that support that because just say if you're from a poverty stricken area right, right. and that parent is struggling or, or getting some type of government assistance. Right, if this young man is bringing in a thousand dollars a week. Yeah. Do you really think mother is going to have mm. an issue with what he's doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The flip side to it is this. If you got parents, because I work with a lot of parents. Yes. Or, or work with young people that come from two-parent households, staying in quarter-million-dollar homes. Mm -hmm. They're so caught up in their lifestyle right. and trying to maintain it busy, that man. they allow the media mm -hmm. to raise their children. children yes, they yes. don't go in their rooms. They don't question their kids about anything they're doing. Their computer, and, and, internet, and, have exactly. Heard so yes. now you got, and, and, and these kids are putting on their Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, 
mentality. Ouch. They're right. going to be obedient children and be, mm -hmm. you know, very respectful in front of their parents. But when they walk out the door, it's a different they're, thing. They're a totally different individual. Before we go, I want to make sure that everyone gets some extra information. We've got some websites and a phone number that parents, community leaders, and everybody has got to get involved. Um, our Powell Gang Expert com. This man's got a wealth of information and so willing and transformative and to save some more lives. CTC-INC.org, please, the Community Teen Coalition, we all need to partner with you yes. in so many areas. And of course, Atlanta Police Department, AtlantaAPD.org is where you can go to find more information. And also, I think we have a number, Chief, we want to share, 404-549-6900. I want to remind everybody, again, it's Traumatic Memories, Gangster, To Be or Not To Be, Art Powell's book. And also, If Streets Could Talk, this documentary, uh, pick it up, read it, and stay in the fight. We, it just sounds like, in a nutshell, we have all got have to be fight. in the fight yes, to sir. save a generation of children. Yes. Um, I, I would be remiss if I can do a quick little shift since I've got the chief of police yes. here. Yes, yes. It all ties together. How are we looking in Atlanta when you're talking about the object of the game clearly is to bring crime down. Right. What do we stand now? Well, Say we're in mid-2012. Um, well, how do we look? We, we are doing well. Uh, at, over the last two and a half years, that uh, Kasim Reed has been in place, and I've been there at the chief of Atlanta. Our crime is down 22 percent. That's great. But you know, numbers mean so little. When I go to your community, yes. you want to know what's going on and why Jim is still out there breaking in houses. That's right. We want to make sure that we continue to partner with communities. We, we've got our community oriented policing units out there working with uh, various different communities and talk about solving long term systemic problems that's in our community. I am so proud to be a part of Mayor Kasim Reed's team mm -hmm. and the things that they've done and adding additional police officers to the streets so that we can do a better job and, and bringing crime down in our city. We thank you all for thank being you. with us and working and doing everything that you can to save us all and save a generation. And let me just say this, these fabulous men right here cannot do what they do without us. Yes. I'll say it for you. We've got to help them help all of us. As always, we thank you for joining us. We're in contact with you. You be in contact with us. We will see you the next time. For a copy of the please send $40 to the Atlanta Association of Black Journalists, P.O. Box 42566, Atlanta, Georgia 30311. Provide your name, mailing address, phone number, and name of the show requested. Make all checks payable to AABJ.